told because I brought it to her. I was like, I was probably like eight or nine. And I brought it to her, and I remember she freaking chased me around the living room, ready to whoop my ass, because I defied her. But I was looking at it like, what is she teaching me here? What are we teaching our children? Because I'm the youngest? Or is it because I'm a girl? You understand? Why didn't I get the equal amount of my older brothers? Did it say I couldn't handle more money? So all these things ingrained over time, all these little things, all these nuances, all these beliefs that were put on me, that was drilled in my head. What was drilled in your head? Remember, to start writing something, as soon as it hits you, write some things down. I heard money doesn't grow on trees. You want that? Psh, please. Nah, I want the new LA gear. Please. It got so bad that I got the Nintendo when Sega was coming out. And I, you know, I never really bothered. I knew that it was tough. So I never really wanted to put pressure on my mom. Okay, I knew it was tough. But this is what I heard, money doesn't grow on trees. You have to go, you have to go to college and get a stable job. That drove me so crazy that I ended up signing up to things that I know I didn't want in my heart, like nursing school. I got it, but I just, I couldn't see myself being, you know what it was? Let me tell you a quick story. I remember in clinical classes, uh, they would assign you a patient and you had that patient the entire day. And for some reason I got like the patient that needed a catheter, needed, I, I, I gotta lift them out of bed, everything. I'm looking around, the other nursing students had ones walking down the hot aisle. Mine was totally bedridden. <laughs> So I was with this person all day and I was cleaning her up, cathed her in, she smelled good, gave her a bath. And I was just with her the entire day and I was talking with her and I really love people. I really love to help people. So it wasn't the, the act of the people part that I hated. It was this part. So I go out at the end of the day, mind you, it was already seven hours spent with my patient who was well taken care of and I went out to write in the chart. At the end, you have to write in the chart, the care plan and everything that you've done and what their care, I don't even know the words anymore, the care, you know, but the care plan. And uh, so I, I sat down and it took me a while and I finished it and I closed the chart. Next thing you know, some doctor came opened the chart, the same chart I had, scribbled two things in there, put the thing down, and left. And I was like, wait a second. I was with that patient all day. And this man just came here, scribbled two words that I cannot make out. And I have to make it out because she needs medicine. I don't know what this is. And left. And I said, you know, there's a better way. There's a better use of time. Now, I'm not knocking anyone because I come from a family of nurses and healthcare professionals, healthcare providers, and I, man, I salute you guys. And, um, you know, my mom's a nurse, my aunt's a nurse. I come from this whole healthcare. So it was almost like a rite of passage to go to college, get the stable job. But that day, something happened inside of me when I saw the doctor just scribble two lines and leave. I said, you know what? There's a better use of my time here. There was another incident that happened, but I heard, be careful. How many of you guys heard, hear, you just raise your hand, show of hands, be careful. That was a big one, right? I mean, yeah, it was a, I heard this all the time. I mean, even playing outside. Don't know about you, but I was a tomboy. Up in trees, down in trees, jumping off of things, dirt bikes, bikes, twirling, swirling. My knees, my knees still like messed up from it. Be careful, Stace. If I listened to this, first of all, I wouldn't even have any fun, any adventure. But now I have to hear this as an adult. And where is it coming from? It's still coming from my parents. It's coming from our friends. It goes back, it goes back to the people. It's still coming back from my friends, my coworkers. Where are you hearing that? Be careful. And don't go over there. And I guess because, you know, I was kidnapped. I have this whole idea about, you know, I keep, I, I clutch kids, you know, but what's wrong with a stranger? 
All right, is everyone bad? That's what it's teaching me. That I cannot trust anyone. And then you can't be rich. It's too hard. You know how many times I heard that? How many of you guys hear, heard that as well? Yeah, can't be rich. And I'm like, can't. So wait till you see the next slide because it's going to be so uh, funny when you hear that. And being rich is not spiritual. The meek will inherit the earth. So it comes down to religion as well, guys. It comes down to religion. Being rich is not spiritual. So we have to what? Do what? Be Mother Teresa. Give, 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 give. Don't ask. The meek will inherit the earth. What about your environment? Going for a haircut. I know most of you guys are from Philadelphia. Great. I'm going to tell you a story. So I was going for a haircut one day. And remember, negative blocks environment. I was going for a haircut one day and I uh, was looking around online trying to find a good barber because ever since moving out here, I couldn't find a decent barber. I had to go back to Jersey. I said, you know what? After I changed my mindset, I said, why the hell am I going one, two hours away to get a haircut to come back? Two hours. It's a waste of time. You're going to learn that time is very valuable. So I said, I got to find something closer. I need a haircut. Me and a friend of mine, we jumped in the car. We found one. Don't know exactly where it is in, in Philadelphia, but we found one. And then as soon as we went, as soon as we entered this neighborhood, there were so many people on the sidewalk. It was Tuesday afternoon or something like that. It was or Wednesday afternoon. It was mid-afternoon. But the energy of the environment was that of lack, scarcity, laziness, complacency, comfort. I noticed it right away. People walking across the, uh, the sidewalk, the, the street there, slow. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do. Hanging out. And I said to myself, and, and you know what was so funny is that there was so much trash outside and the grass everywhere. It was like abnormally trashy. You know, sometimes, you know, there's things blowing here and there. This is America. Okay, people, you know, there's things, you know, it's not Toronto. I know you guys, there's some, there's some very clean cities. I think Toronto is up there. Um, but the, for this place, it, was, it just looked abnormal. It looked like someone just like, I'll just dump it here. That's, that's not a place to, environment is negative. So the friend that I was driving with said, you know what, Stace? Why don't they all just come together? Or, no, she said, why don't the city, why don't the city clean this thing up? I said, well, you know, that's, that's really a, um, that's really a statement that, uh, someone with another mindset will say. A different mindset. Let me just, uh, turn this ringer off here. Hold on. Okay. Um, so why do you think she says that? Because we depend so much on the city, on the government, on our parents, on teachers. There's a dependency there, right? So I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. Even if the city comes and cleans it up, the consciousness of this environment is that everything will end up right back on the sidewalks, end up right back on the street. So watch your environment as well. Don't be afraid to move. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Leave your boundaries, leave it. I moved five times. Three times here in Maniunk, you know? Five, I'm not scared to move. I know that I want to see a, a positive environment. What about your home surroundings? I mean, your environment could be outside, but also your environment could be inside your body, and your environment could be inside your home. <clears throat> so your home surroundings, are you setting yourself up for success? It gotten so bad where I needed to change my negative blocks that I printed out affirmations on sheets of eight, eight and a half by 11 papers and posted them up 
all over my home. As soon as I woke up, boom, it's right in front of me. As soon as I took a ish, right there. Yes, I put it in the bathroom. As soon as I looked in the mirror, it was right there. On the door before I left, right there. On all the doors and walls, I placed affirmations. Affirmations, we're gonna learn about them. But yes, affirmations. You are powerful. I am beautiful. I am highly energetic. These are what I saw when I woke up. I changed my environment in my home from even neutral, forget negative, even neutral to positive. I want my environment to talk to me, to feed me. How do we overcome these negative blocks? So as I mentioned right now, there are four ways. I want to write these down. There are four ways to overcome negative blocks. It's going to take work. I'm not gonna be here that's gonna say it's gonna happen overnight. It's going to take work, but it's very powerful once you set these in motion. Just so you know, I created affirmations. There's 21 of them. It's a program that I have. Uh, there's 21 actionable affirmations. You learn the difference during the program. There's three hours of audio content there. Uh, 